the Honorable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I'm very honored to rise today to speak to our government's commitment and dedication to providing veterans and their families with the support they need and deserve. That is why we introduced the Support for, for Veterans and Their Families Act and included these measures in the Economic Action Plan 2015. This important piece of legislation will put new benefits and services in place to improve the health and well-being of those seriously injured during service. These are improvements NDP members have pointed out the need for. These are advances of uh, the veterans and bondsmen, veterans and their advocacy group have called for. These measures also address the very recommendations the Standing Committee on Veterans Affairs made in the report, the new Veterans Charter moving forward. As a member of the Standing Comite uh, Committee on Veterans Affairs, I can attest to the extensive consultation and review we undertook to ensure our recommendations were sound and address the very concerns of veterans, their families, and the groups that represent them. This legislation will not only improve the new Veterans Charter, but it explicitly outlines the government's commitment and dedication to providing veterans with the help they need to successfully transition to civilian life in a purpose statement. This purpose statement will be included in the new Veterans Charter so that it's, uh, this existing and important legislation recognizes and fulfills the obligation of the people and government of Canada to show just and due appreciation uh, to members and veterans for their service to Canada. Something I think we all agree is very important and is obviously why we are having this debate today. My colleagues, on this side of the House have already spoken at length about some of the measures in the Economic Action Plan, including the Retirement Income Security Benefit, Family Caregiver Relief Benefit, Critical Injury Benefit. That is why, in addition to the new measures introduced, we are putting more resources where they are needed to ensure service excellence. Everyone knows case managers and the frontline service they offer are vitally important to veterans who need their services. That is why the minister announced last month that more than 100 permanent full-time case, man case managers will be hired to improve one-on-one -on -one service. Veterans and their families who are experiencing, uh, experiencing complex mental health and transitional, transition needs will have them addressed more quickly and efficiently. These additional resources, combined with a more balanced approach to managing the workload of the case managers, will help reduce the current ratio of 40 case managed veterans to one case manager, down to 30 case managed veterans for each case manager. This will lead to better service and ultimately better outcomes for veterans. It also means veterans will be able to access the services they need quicker. To ensure balanced caseloads, all case managers will have their caseload constantly assessed, adjusted, and balanced so their time and attention is given appropriately to the needs of seriously ill or injured veterans. It is absolutely critical that veterans, as well as the Canadian Armed Forces members who are released right now from the military, know they will continue to be well served and their needs met efficiently with care, compassion, and respect. Our government has also committed to uh, the financial resources for the department to hire more than 100 new disability benefits staff, both temporary and permanent, hiring more employees whose job it will be to evaluate disability benefit uh, claims means veterans and their families will have faster access to disability benefits, health care, and mental health treatment. <clears throat> Since becoming minister in January, the Minister of Veterans Affairs has consulted with veterans across the country to ensure we implement changes 
that will greatly benefit those who have served our country and their families. This has resulted in fundamental improvements required to many to the many systems, services, supports, benefits, and programs provided or delivered so veterans can be served better. Everything we do to support veterans is now veteran-centric, meaning everything we do centers around what is best for the veteran. We are striving for service excellence and ensuring veterans are treated with care, compassion, and respect. That is why the minister has asked uh, that options be examined to consolidate all veterans affairs benefits so they only have to access one single clear and easy to understand benefit system. This action alone can have a dramatic impact on reducing stress on the injured soldier as he or she transitions to civilian life. The improved way veterans and their families are cared for and served did not only begin this year. Though, Mr. Speaker, our government also took action last year in response to the Standing Committee on Veterans Affairs recommendations by announcing the addition of new operational stress injury clinic in Halifax. We also announced that the OSI satellite clinics in St. John's, Chicotomy, Pembroke, Brockville, Kelowna, Victoria, and the greater Toronto area will be expanded to speed access to mental health services for those with mental health conditions. These clinics play a key role in providing specialized assessment, diagnosis, and treatment services for veterans and their families who are living with operational stress injuries. In fact, to support them by the end of the year, veterans and the Canadian Armed Forces members will have, an access, will have access to an uh, established network of 26 operational stress injury clinics. Access is also being expanded to seven military family resource centers across the country as part of a pilot project. Traditionally, the services and programs offered through the centers have only been available to still serving members of the military. Up to 1,200 medically released veterans and their families may now take part over the course of the pilot, giving them access to a wide range of services to help smooth some of the challenges they face as they transition to a civilian life. Mental health first aid training course designed especially for veterans and their families will help them better understand the various kinds of mental health conditions and their impact. A veteran or his or her family member will then be able to respond earlier when someone they care about is in crisis. New research, research funding will ensure we have the information we need to develop policies and programs grounded in good science and research to support better mental health treatments, faster recoveries, and better outcomes for veterans serving members and their families. We are making real and significant progress, Mr. Speaker. We will continue to work each and every day to improve the programs, benefits, and services Canada's veterans and their families need and deserve. Instead of playing political games, I urge all members of the NDP and this House to support the measures included in the Support for Veterans and Their Families Act and, and in the Economic Action Plan. It is the right and honorable thing to do for veterans and their families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Question commentary, the honorable member for, I do it all the time. I always want to get the high park in, Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think it's the two parks that are confusing. Um, I'm very pleased to, uh, to rise and ask a question of my, of my colleague uh, because I think that there is a great deal of support in the House for, um, for this NDP motion in support of veterans. And I know in my community in Parkdale High Park, I regularly visit our two, uh, our two legions, the Royal Canadian 
uh, Legion Maple Leaf Branch, uh, which includes uh, the Swansea Branch 46, and then the the one on the lake shore, the the um, Branch 344, the Queen's Own Rifles. It's where my dad joined the Navy in the war, so it holds a special place in my heart. But it's not only in the legions across the country that we find support for our veterans. Uh, certainly just uh, chatting with neighbors, uh, friends, family, there is tremendous support and respect for our veterans, the work they do. And uh, of course, we want to make sure that because they're willing to make a huge sacrifice for this country, for us, that we uh, make sure we support them when they return. And um, uh, my question to the member is that there have been obviously a lot of frictions with the government of late because the closure of the uh, veterans offices, the cutting of, uh, of personnel, and uh, taking uh, to veterans to court to deny them the benefits that they uh, should be receiving. So my question to the Honourable Member is, I know that he personally supports veterans, but um, certainly he sees, does he not see the, the government as being at odds with veterans because of the cutbacks they've made and challenging veterans' uh, benefits in court? Can he answer that for me? The Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to thank my honorable colleague for her question, and uh, I, I, I've uh, uh, also uh, visited the long-term care facility that is in her riding where many veterans uh, spend their uh, days now uh, when they have to be cared for. And what I would like to stress, Mr. Speaker, that I have a lot of respect for veterans, and I've always had. I remember my grandfather, I, I, uh, he was, I was very young when he passed away. I remember he was missing his right arm. He lost it in the first war. And of course, where I grew up, uh, every family was affected by the Second World War, like all families here in this country. And what we should all stress, is stressed very strong, especially for uh, uh, my generation and generations that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that's younger than me, for us born after the war, we have to understand and we have to always uh, admit that what we enjoy today, all our freedoms, all our uh, uh, great country, we owe it to those that went and fought. Almost someone from every family in Canada went to Europe and fought for the freedoms that we, that, that were born after the war, uh, enjoy today. And, uh, the other uh, member mentioned that there were some service cuts, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, what happened during this government, we restored some services that were deeply cut in 1990s by the previous government, and we enhanced many services. Now, uh, she also mentioned the closure of uh, service centers. Mr. Speaker, I think we should give a chance to the new system to these contact uh, uh, points where that, uh, that are established at Service Canada, give it a chance to, to work, to see how they work for the veterans. If they need improvement, we'll improve them. But you know what? We have to move with life. Things change in life. Technology changes. changes. Uh, the way people communicate changes. Therefore, delivery of services also changes. Let's give it a chance, but I think there is no disagreement on any side of this house that we have to support veterans because for, of their service to all of us and to our country. Thank you very much.